Hello, dear friends. Today, I'm going to give a brief summary of the novel Nectar in a Sea. The novel unfolds the story of Rukmini's life, who's a widow and who looks at her own life in a flashback. She narrates various and varied experiences and records her observations about life. Her life story gives us the first-hand information about the hardships faced by the Indian rural people. Rukmini was the fourth daughter of the headman of a South Indian village. Her elder sisters were married off with good dowries. At the time of her marriage, her father was not well off and he could not afford a good dowry for her. So she was married to a poor tenant farmer called Nathu. It was not considered to be a good match and she felt humiliated. But realizing that her husband was an affectionate and considerate person, she started feeling attached to him. Initially, Rukmani was a bit uncomfortable with her husband, but Nathan was a loving man and soon she also started liking him. During this period, Rukmani became friendly with many of her neighbors, but she realized that her husband badly wanted her son to continue the family line. She consulted Dr. Kenny, an English doctor who was very sympathetic, and his treatment uh, helped Rukmini to conceive and give birth to six sons. The calm and quiet life of the village was disturbed when a tannery was established. It created a number of complications in the village. On the one hand, it generated jobs for a large number of young people, but many social evils like gambling, drinking, uh, the, the company of rude hooligans spoiled the calmness of the village. As the tannery began to expand, the owner of the tannery started purchasing a number of neighboring lands and more people in the village became landless. We also come to know about uh, Iravadi not being able to conceive after five years and her husband deserts her. Misfortunes continue knocking at Rukmini's door. First, her crops were destroyed by heavy rains. The family was on the verge of starvation. Still, they had to pay rent to the landlord. Then Rukmini's third son, Raja, was caught stealing and he was killed by the gatekeeper of the tannery. Rukmini was helpless and couldn't do anything. Next year, a severe drought destroyed her, their good crops. So there was nothing to eat. Now they were penniless and the little rice that Rukmini had taken away and kept secretly was uh, taken up by the clever uh, Kunti. She blackmailed uh, Nathan and took away a major part of the rice. Things came to such a pass that Ira took to prostitution to save herself and her younger brother Kunti from starvation. In this way, she conceived and gave birth to a child who was called Sakrabani. Dr. Kenny came to help the family and took up Selvam, the fifth son of Rukmani, as an assistant. But the condition of the family was so bad that Kuti died of starvation. One misfortune followed another and struck Rukmani's family. Since they could not pay the rent to the landlord, they were evacuated from the land. The land was sold to the tannery. Now Rukmani had no option but to leave the village and go to the city. They decided that they would go to their son Murugan, who worked in the city, and seek shelter. However, Ira decided to stay back in the village with her son. Her brother Selvam, who was working with Dr. Kenny, promised that he would help her. Nathan and Rukmini went to the city with heavy heart and equally heavy feet. Nathan was not keeping well. They tried to locate the son in the city, but failed. So they were forced to take shelter in the temple where the priest gave them something to eat. At night, someone stole their bundle of clothes. So now they were completely helpless. They continued to search for their son and a little orphan boy named Uli came to help. At last, they reached their son's house only to find that the son had already deserted his wife and children. So now they couldn't live in this particular house and they returned back to the temple and live on charity like common beggars. So this can be considered the worst phase of their life. Soon they realized that they could not keep feeding on charity. They earned very little, yet they hoped that they would have enough money to return uh, back to their village. Once again, fate was very cruel to them. One day, Nathan, who was drenched, uh, developed high fever and soon breathed his last. 
poor Rukmani was left alone. And it is this little boy named Puli who came to her rescue. He stood by her and gave her solid emotional support. Rukmini soon started liking the boy and ultimately adopted him as her son. They came back to the village and her son Selvam and daughter Iravadi warmly welcomed them. Selvam good, took good care of his mother. Thus, Rukmini came back to her home and went on living her life in abject poverty, suffering pain and agony till time a great healer healed some of her wounds. She was later able to regain her spiritual harmony and it is in this mood of spiritual harmony that she makes a survey or an introspection of her past life and her pain. However, it is not merely the story of Rukmini and Nathan, but it's the story of the whole Indian rural population whose nectar of life flows out of the sea of poverty and hardship. <laughs>